Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Matt Pruitt. Hope y'all are doing well. I am actually a little bit tired, but I wanted to get a video up on my personal channel because uh, I want to try to get back to doing that a little bit more regularly. And so I decided to share some stuff uh, that I've been dealing with since I moved here and figured out how to fix it and resolve it and all that good stuff. And we're talking about audio. Uh, I've done a couple of different videos in the past talking about uh, audio as far as your videos, because if your audio is craptastic, people will not watch your videos. They won't. Uh, so you have to have decent, uh, decent microphones. Well, it ain't even got to be decent. It's just got to be better than like the default microphone on the webcam. So the default microphone on a smartphone or whatever, uh, but something that's nicer. Uh, that's that's going to give you more of a, a, a cardioid pickup pattern, not something that's going to pick up sound all around the microphone capsule. So that's one thing. And then another thing to consider is the actual recorded environment. For example, here in my home studio, I have acoustic tiles set up to sort of, you know, knock down the reverb and the echo in the room. But None of that's going to matter if this other bit isn't quite worked out. Allow me to explain. So after we moved here to California and, you know, we got here um, in the house that we're staying in. It's a, it's a lovely home. I love this place, but it's an old place. That means you can have a couple problems as far as uh, like, I don't know, structural maintenance and things like that. None of that's the, the issue here. But do we have some problems with what they call dirty power. You hear about that a lot in older homes where basically the electricity is is spiking a, a certain frequency uh, when you start recording audio, uh, especially if it's in a studio that's got a bunch of different equipment plugged up. When you record your audio, your system that's capturing the audio will pick up those low frequencies that's coming through your computer. And it'll be... Um, a really low frequency in my case is right at about 500 hertz and most people can't hear that uh, but every now and then you will hear it as a little buzz or a hum or things like that so that was one thing I had to figure out how to fix that and I did and then the other thing is after I got that fixed it screwed up some other settings that I had to, had to take care of because after I got rid of that rumble I started hearing this whole little hissing sound just really really high pitch hissing sound and i'm thinking this mic is is perfectly fine there's nothing around me hissing uh some people confused it and thought it was an an, an a, a air duct or something like that which makes perfect sense because it really did sound like that but there were times where i didn't have the air ducts uh the air conditioner and, and fan blowing and it just kept picking up that sound I expected it to pick up the sound of my computer from time to time because my computer can get loud, but that wasn't the case. This was a setting inside of Windows that was really, really screwing me up. So what I want to do is walk you all through setting up if you have like a, a mixer or some type of internal, um, not an internal, but some sort of external uh, interface that you plug in a, a microphone and then plug that into your computer it's probably going to have a different couple different settings on it that that you will have to take in consideration in my case it's a mixer but it should still apply to what you're using if you're using some sort of external box so we're going to take a look at the mixer getting that squared away and then we're going to fix that problem the high frequency problem that i had and i'll show you different examples all right, so let's first take a look at my mixer and uh, let me see if I can switch my camera. Uh, I think that's it. Yep. And I'm going to have to move the microphone over here. So if you're looking at my mixer, sorry, I'm trying to get it in focus and keep my voice on the mic. Right now you're looking at my mixer and I have one microphone plugged in right there that's just one microphone plugged in and that's the mic that i'm speaking into right now and mixers like this one have a whole bunch of different settings uh this section here uh these three sections these three knobs here these are pretty much your equalizer and you can set those to however you see fit for your voice 
These three here are different types of effects down here. I never use those. That's why they set to the default setting of just straight up and down. But then up here at the very top, you have this knob here and it's called the input gain. Let's see if I can show it. Yeah, see, there's one right there. It's on all of your microphones. This knob here is what's called the input gain. And this is the most important one on here. We want to make sure that that thing is cranked all the way up to start just before it gets to the point of clipping your audio. So when I first plugged this in, I turned it all the way up and then I spoke into the mic and listened back on the computer to see exactly how it was sounding for me. So let me show you again. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I will record some audio with the mic turned up really, really loud, and it's probably going to hurt your ear. So back off on your volume just a touch. So I'm going to turn up the input gains right now, but I'm not going to say anything, but I just want you to see the waveform. Okay, so I'm going to hit record and turn up the input gain. So what I did here was I hit record with the input game at, at a somewhat normal rate, normal level that I normally keep it at. And then I turned it up really loud and you'll see right here in the bottom that it started to pick up some additional audio. This bottom spec bottom part is called the spectral display and up here at the top is called the waveform. And if you look closer at the waveform, you'll see there was a little bit of audio sort of sneaking in right there because it's sort of the waves are going up and down. But the best way to look at it, in my opinion, is to use the spectral display down here at the bottom. Notice how dark it is here. When it's dark like that, that means there's nothing being picked up. Not a lot of sound, not a lot of uh, extra noise or anything. But now when I turn that input volume up, we got more color, the purple here, and this uh, magenta and pinkish colors here, that's getting a little bit louder. And the louder it gets in amplitude, it'll start to turn more of an orange or yellow if it's really loud. And you can see down here in these lower frequencies, like at 400, 500 hertz, there is some audio that's, that's being picked up by this microphone and actually is more so by the computer with the, um, the dirty power that I was talking about. This line right here, that could be anything that could be another piece of uh, of another problem with the power or it could be like a uh, a fan that's running because it's at a really really high frequency so we need to get this stuff squared away all right so what i can do is just basically talk into the microphone each time at a different uh, uh level for my input game so let me see if i can just select all here and delete this and just do a check, check, check until my voice stops clipping. So now I'm going to turn this up really, really loud. So back your ears off just a touch. Okay. And then I'm going to turn up the, um, then we'll change the input volume to a little bit lower. Check, check, check. I'm not speaking any louder, but that waveform is a lot bigger. Waveform should be smaller now. I've turned it back to a normal state no clipping, much better view of the audio. Okay, so that handles that just taking care of the input gain. But the reason I'm able to do that is because I also set on my mixer, the actual uh, faders at the bottom of the mixer. Most of the time when you look at a mixer, it's got a little fader that you push up and down. And if you look at my faders over here and pretty much look at any fader, let me show that screen again. There we go. Pretty much look at any mixer. Move the mic so you can hear me. Pretty much any mixer will have these little knobs and faders on the bottom. But if you notice something, there's these little squares that's right near the top of the faders, and it's on all of these. That square is basically an optimal range where you should try to keep the slider that where they say, okay, if you have your sliders here, you're not going to clip your audio as long as you also have your input gain squared away. So I got that squared away and this is sitting in the optimal range. If I pulled it down too low, you wouldn't be able to hear me. Like right now, you probably can't hear me. 
But when I push it right back up, this takes it to a much better uh, level and giving me proper signal. And I'm not getting any clipping because those lights are just flashing green. They're not flashing red. So that's one way and the main way to get your mixer set up and squared away. Uh, but there is one more thing that you have to consider. And that is the magical world of windows on my, for my side of things. And it is a bit of a pain in the butt, but I'm glad I was able to fix it. So let me show you what happens with windows. So I'm going to go back to Adobe audition here. Where's that screen? There's that screen back to Adobe audition. I'm going to get rid of all of this on the screen and I'm going to take a look at the, uh, the, the, sound control panel inside of windows actually i already have it open don't i yep so i'll click there and that's going to open up another little window and in the inside of the sound control panel you want to go to recording let's move this so you can see it so you click on this re recording tab and it should give you everything that's recording and in my case it's showing my microphone usb connected it's an xlr mic but it's got a usb interface so you can double click on it or just click on properties in order to give you one more screen. Next, you want to click on levels right here. Notice my levels is set to 78. The reason for that is because of the high frequency hum and hiss that I was picking up um, after I got, got all of this squared away. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this over to 100%, which is ideally where you want it to be because you want your mic to be giving you all of the, the decibels. So I'm going to push it up and just take a listen to how it sounds. It's going to sound a lot different. I'm going to get quiet and you'll hear a little bit of a hiss. Better yet, you probably even hear the crickets and things going on in the background outside because I have my window open. So now let's go ahead and, and, and play around with this from the spectral display standpoint. So we have it set right now at about 78%. So I'm going to hit record over here. And that's just me talking into the microphone as usual. Now watch this spectral display. As I start speaking more and more, you'll notice that the upper part of the spectral display will start to get some different frequencies when I'm quiet. So I'm going to turn it up now and then you'll notice a little more purple right about here. See that? All of this purple filled in. It even has my levels clipping now. As I turn it down, it goes back to a more comfortable volume for you as the listener. And it looks so much better on the spectral display. So check that in your settings. Make sure it's good for you if you're having this weird hiss and weird uh, hum at the low frequency, weird hiss at the high frequency. It's a couple things that you have to consider first your input device is your mic decent okay good your mic is decent next is your uh, mixer or your interface that goes into your computer is it com is it properly configured okay it is configured good now am i running windows and am i dealing with an issue with of windows sound control panel cranking up the gains on my microphone and allowing me to pick up a whole bunch of extra frequencies that does not sound good Okay, there's the problem. Fix those three. Make sure everything in that chain is squared away. And I guarantee you, your audio is going to start to sound so much better. I'm using Adobe Audition to demonstrate what I was listening to when I tested my audio and, and record my audio. And I'm not sitting here saying you need Adobe Audition to do this. You can use some free sources like um, Audacity that are out there or whatever your audio recording option is but if you have a spectral display like what i was showing in audition oh it's so much more helpful all right so that's it i've held y'all long enough on this here video i thank you all for watching uh, i hope it's been very helpful i know i get a little bit long with it sometime i'm sorry i'm working on that 
do me a favor, share this video out with anyone else that is interested in making their audio sound better for their live streams, OBS or XSplit or just podcasting and uh, content creation in general. It will make a huge difference. So pass this along to other folks. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment below and all that good stuff. I try to answer them all as soon as they come in. Really does mean a lot. All right. And um, that's going to do it for this week. And I hope you all are doing well. I'll catch you all next time. Create and dominate. Peace.